the sixth Churchill-Roosevelt meeting takes its place in history, and the departing Prime Minister receives ancient Quebec's greatest ovation. Now Ottawa, Canada, and the Dominion's capital gives its own ovation to President Roosevelt, climaxing his part in the Quebec meeting with this good neighbor visit. Standing before the great Parliament building, President Roosevelt again demands unconditional surrender and says of Quebec, But in due time, we shall communicate the secret information of the Quebec conference to Germany, Italy, and Japan. We shall communicate this information to our enemies in the only language that twisted minds seem capable of understanding. Sometimes I wish that that great master of intuition, the Nazi leader, could have been present in spirit at the Quebec conference. I am thoroughly glad that he was not there in person. <laughs> if he and his generals had known our plans, they would have realized that discretion is still the better part of valor and that surrender would pay them better now than later. Yes, at Quebec, Allied Chiefs of Staff made the secret plans. Hitler's fate was in this room, Japan's too. Orders and plans for the Southwest Pacific Command of four-star Douglas MacArthur. Secret new plans for the North African command of Nazi smasher Ike Eisenhower. And a dramatic new command, Southeast Asia under Britain's commando chief, Lord Louis Mountbatten. Arriving in Washington, 43-year-old Lord Mountbatten speaks for action. As you know, it is an allied command, and I'm particularly proud to think that there will be United States forces and British forces fighting side by side in the Southeast Asia Command with our Chinese allies until we've finally thrown the Japs out and final victory is won. Still Quebec's secret is the crucial Western European Command, the much rumored invasion front. These men know the answers. Roosevelt, Mackenzie King, Winston Churchill. Quebec, like Casablanca, will be remembered not by words, but by bloody action by hard-won victories. Mm -hmm.